All right. Uh, what we're going to do now um, is we are going to talk about um, three three very closely related um, concepts, and um, our focus is going to be on objects, and we're going to come up. We're going to we're going to approach it from three different um, three different aspects of objects. And again, this might be review for you. If it is, good. You know, um, if it's not, if it's something that you're encountering for the first time, then then it's good that we're going over. Or if it's something that maybe you've encountered and uh, you need a refresher on, that's good as well. Um, so we're, we're talking about objects. And first thing I want to talk about, let, let me list the three things that I want to talk about. And they're all sort of related, so you'll, you'll see. Thing one is object references. versus primitives. Two constructors and three is the life cycle of an object. And they're all related, so there's going to be some crossover. Um, if I was going to ask you to rate on a scale of 1 to 10 how familiar you are with these concepts, all right, 10 meaning that you're going to sit the whole time and roll your eyes and write and, and, and tweet all the mistakes I make about them, all right, one being that you're not even sure you understand what those words mean, all right. Like of or and, all right. How familiar would you say you are? Scale of one to ten. I'm a one. One, okay. I'm, that's, I'm not that's ashamed. Fair. Oh no. I'd say five. Five. Five or six. Well, I'm not gonna roll my eyes, but I think I get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Well, we have a, we have a range of people in the class, so hopefully uh, hopefully this will cover everything. Uh, first of all. Object references versus primitives. I think that's a good point to start. In Java, there are two sorts of variables. There are object references and there are primitives. Primitives are simple data types. Things such as integer or int, <coughs> boolean, double, and so on. Character, char. All right? So when you see primitive, you know, the, the, the term primitive implies it's simple, it's basic. All right? An object reference is a variable that refers to or points to an object. Now it's important, I think, to understand internally how these things get stored. All right? What is the difference between saying one versus another? And the difference is, is this. If I go in and I declare int x, then I say something like x equals 0. What it's doing is there is somewhere in memory a certain number of bytes set aside. And again, I'm not going to go over the details, uh, you know, how many bytes. Uh, Largely because I don't know off the top of my head. There would probably be two or four would be my guess. But there's a certain number of bytes that are set aside that are named x now. All right. And if I set the value of 0, the binary representation of 0 will be placed in those. All right. If I, uh, if I say x equals 2 then, the storage location that has an, uh, uh, a that is pointed to by the name x will get set and the value will get changed to the binary representation of the number 2. So that's how primitives work. With primitives, when you declare a variable, you're setting aside 
a certain portion of memory, and you're giving that portion of memory a name. And then, when you assign, or when you use values from, uh, from that variable, you're getting the value of that memory location. All right? So think of it as being little boxes that you filled in that have names associated with it. But here's the key. With primitives, what's stored in the memory location, all right, is the actual value of the integer or the Boolean or whatever it is. That's not going to be the same when we talk about object references. Objects, object references, or objects as you know, are a more complex data type. All right? What's associated with an integer? Nothing, really, just a value. All right? There, there aren't properties associated with an integer. The only real property of an integer is the value of that integer. All right? Likewise with a Boolean. A Boolean's a simple data type. It's true or it's false. All right, nothing complex. Compare that to a object or an, an object. An object again is is a uh, is a is a complex data type. It can have properties and methods associated with it. All right. Objects. Uh, another way to say it, the way they say it in the Intro to Java book, is that objects know things and objects can do things. So if we were to make an, a, a class for circle, all right, one of the attributes of the circle might be a radius. All right. One of the methods on the circle could be to calculate the area, to calculate the circumference, to calculate the diameter, and so on. So objects are more complex data type because in addition to having a value and having, they could actually have a set of values. If we were doing, for example, like we did in the intro to Java class that at least some of you are taking, we did a class for rectangle. A rectangle doesn't have one attribute. A rectangle has two attributes. It has a height and has a width, right? So there's two things that a rectangle knows about itself. It knows how tall it is and how wide it is. In addition to that, there are some behaviors that a rectangle can do. A rectangle can calculate um, the area. The rectangle can calculate the perimeter, and so on. All right. So in this way, I, uh, uh, objects are more complex than primitives. With primitives, really, an integer, what is an integer? It's an integer. It's a number, a value. For a rectangle, or a more complex thing, there can be multiple attributes associated with it and multiple behaviors. The one thing to clarify and to back up a second is, is I've unfortunately been bopping back and forth between the term class and object. A class is meant to be a template uh, for objects. Uh, a class is a, uh, is a description of um, a certain real world entity. All right. It's meant to be a generic description, a generic um, model of some real world entity. A object is a specific member of that entity. So for example, if I was defining a class for book, the class would be book. All right? I would define what the attributes for a book are, the title, the author, the date it was published, the number of pages, the kind of binding it has, and so on and so forth. That would be, again, defined in the class for a book. An object, then, would be a specific instance of a book. It would be this book. All right? This would be an object because it's a specific member of that class. It's a member of that entity. So the object is sort of the general. The class is a specific member of that. So when I talk about an object reference, I'm talking about a variable all right, that points 
to an object. It doesn't contain an object. In the same way that a primitive contains the value. Alright? So, if I do this, let's assume I have a circle class. If I say circle C, what I've done in effect is I've said I'm going to have a variable named C that eventually is going to point to a circle object. All right? So C is going to point to a circle object. However, that in itself doesn't create the object. All right. Declaring an object reference does not create an object. What does create an object? When does an object get instantiated or created? Hint, that doesn't do it. What does do it? What creates an object? What creates an instance of an object? Anyone know, or are we just being shy this morning? Well, you have to use a constructor. You use a constructor. And, and how do you use that? In the, what, what's the, the, the statement in the language to do that? Repeat, please. Oh, okay. All right. It's with the new command. All right. The new, the new command creates an instance of the object. And she used a great word that we'll come to in a second. It, you know, to, to speak in, in proper terms, it invokes a constructor. All right. So this simply is sort of like a warning to the compiler. Hey, I'm going to have something called C that's going to point to a circle at some point. All right. This. I 
might not know that number off the top of my head, but I could Google it and, and find out how much memory the integer is going to take. I can't tell you how much memory that object's going to take because it depends on, on the class that that object is created from. Now, so when I execute this statement, it actually creates some memory on the heap required for that circle, and then it stores a pointer to whatever this memory location is. In this case, I'll just say it's 101. So wherever it gets created in memory on the heap, all right, it gets um, stored in that location. All right, and C then doesn't contain the actual circle object. That circle object is stored in the heap. What C contains is a pointer to that object. All right, and that's critical. All right. That's critical when we contrast that with the way that primitives work. All right? Let's say I make two integers, in x and in y. All right? So I have int x, int y. x equals 2. y equals x. x equals 3. What's the value of y at this point? It's 2, right? The reason for that is this is a primitive. We declare our two variables, x and y, as integers, which are primitives. We initialize the value of x to 2. So that stores in the storage location named x, it stores a 2. We then say y is equal to x. So what does that do? Anytime you have an assignment statement like that, it copies that memory location, the name of that memory location, into this memory location. So in this case, what's stored in that memory location named x? The 2 stored there. So what does this statement do? Copies a 2 in there. So now we have two integer variables both having a number or both having a value of 2. I then execute the statement x equals 3. And that changes the value of x to 3, but it doesn't do anything to the variable y. All right? So with primitives in Java, whenever we assign a value, we're copying the actual value of it. We're copying the actual value. Let's imagine we have a simple class for circle. And again, a class is sort of a template for some entity in our problem domain. And it can have attributes, that is characteristics, and it can have methods. So let's say our circle class has an integer for radius. It has a set radius function that accepts an integer and sets the value of the radius. It has a get radius, which returns the value of the radius. And then it has a calculate area that does, takes the radius, does the math, and, and returns the value of the area. So let's say that's in our very simple uh, circle class. We have integer and three methods. Contrast how this is going to work with, or, or, or how this works with our previous example. If I say x equals circle x, 
equals new circle. What I've done there is I've really combined two statements, right? I've combined circle x and x equals new circle. So sometimes in the shorthand, if you want to declare a variable and initialize the object, you do it this way. That just cuts down the number of statements. So I do that. I then say circle y equals new circle. I say x set radius 12. Y set radius 24. I then say X equals Y. At this point, what's the radius of circle X? 24. Alright? Uh, uh, let's make sure we understand why that is. Alright? Circle X equals new circle. What that's going to do is that is going to create a object reference called X and on the heap it's going to create a circle object we'll say in position 101, a memory location that that's going to contain a radius and all the other stuff associated with the circle. So now 101 is stored there. So this X points to that location in memory. Circle Y equals new circle, the same thing happens. Y is created let's say in location 201 and it has a radius. Alright? No value yet, we haven't initialized the radius. X dot set radius 12 will go and it will store a 12 assuming that's what the function does, it will store a 12 in the radius for the object X. Another way to say this is it's going to set the radius to 12 in the object that is pointed to by the variable X, that is the object that is in memory location 101. We come along and say this, Y set radius 24. What's that saying? It's saying find the object is in the position pointed to by y, which is this one, 201, the radius, and set equals to 24. Now, we have this statement that says x equals y. And interestingly enough, it works the exact same way as when these were integers. The difference being is the contents of those variables are of a different kind. When we had our integers, let's say A and B, and I said B equals A, what did it do? It copied the value of A into location B. So it overwrote the value of 3 with the value of 2. Now, with object references, it works the same way is going to overwrite the contents of X with the contents of Y. What is the contents of X? Or what is the contents of Y? It's 201. So it's going to take that 201 and store it in X. So now we have two object reference variables that point to the one object. All right. In other words, X and Y are simply two names that point to that object that's located in 201. So
So here's the difference. If I go and change A, that has no effect on B. If I go and set the radius for X, however, it changes it for Y also because they both point to the same object. There now is only one object on the heap, and both of those objects point to them. So the important thing to remember about this, to summarize, is that object references are different than primitives in that object references don't contain the actual values. They don't contain the actual data. They contain pointers to where that object lives. All right? With primitives, the primitives store the actual value. Assignment statements work the same way. We're copying one memory location to another. But the implication is different because the contents of those data locations are different. For primitive, is copying the value over. So now we have two independent variables that both have a value of two in this case. But if I change one, it has no impact on the other. In the case of object references, though, when I assign x equals y, I take the value of y, stuff it into x. All right? Now both of these point to the same object. All right. Therefore, if I make a change to this object by setting one of its properties, it affects both of these because both of these point to the same object. Questions about this? Those of you that did programming um, in the past, uh, might have might remember the, the phrase with functions passing by value versus passing by reference. All right, I, I know that was a big thing like in DB and, and other languages. Object reference variables are always treated as references, whereas primitives are always treated as values. So this has implications as far as assignment statements go. It also has implications as far as calling a function or returning a function. In the case of a function dealing with primitives, it's returning an actual value. So it's returning a number, or it's returning a Boolean, or it's returning any of the other uh, primitives. In the case of an object that return, I'm sorry, in the case of a function that returns an object, it's not returning an object per se, is returning an object pointer. So if I call a function, it returns a circle object. What it's really returning is a pointer to that circle object in memory. And that will get stuffed uh, in there. All right. Questions about this? Yes? Going forward, um, none of this happens until you do a construction. Constructor statement makes it all happen. Well, this is a statement that invokes a constructor. Okay. Right? This is assuming that this is in the on a knit or some method in our bigger activity. Okay. So we're not worrying about we're, we're not thinking about where this code lives right now. We're assuming this code's getting run. And then we're talking about the constructors for these now. Okay. All right. Now, let's consider this case. Reconsider this case. All right. We create an X object a reference. We create a Y object reference. And they both point to different objects. So right now, I have two objects. I set the radius of one, I set the radius of the other, I then say x equals y, which means copy the contents of y into x. The contents of y is not the object itself, but an object reference. Therefore, I copy the reference over into x. So now, both, and again, assuming this is the only relevant code here, both of these object reference variables point to 